As it is, the war is escalating and spilling over. The attacks have intensified. Ukraine carried out drone attacks on Moscow. Russia sees this as provocation, its own attacks on Ukrainian cities notwithstanding. So Russia wants to retaliate. Meanwhile, Ukraine is pushing forth with its counter-offensive. They may or may not succeed, but they're going to need more weapons. That's certain. A seemingly uninterrupted supply of weapons, that's what Ukraine needs. Its key source are partners in Central Europe, but they've hit a roadblock. They don't have enough workers for their weapons factories. Here's a report. Over 500 days into the conflict, Ukraine and its Western backers are confronting a new challenge. No, it's not the weapon supplies. Manufacturers are ready to meet Kyiv's requirements. What they are struggling with is talent. The workers needed to make the weapons are in short supply. A recruitment drive is underway in Central Europe. It's one of the key hubs where war supplies for Ukraine are built. Since the war began in 2022, factories in Poland and the Czech Republic have been churning out guns, shells and more. The output has already matched the size and scale of the Berlin War era. But the manufacturers think they can do better. They want to ramp up production, but they don't have enough workers. So the arms industry is rolling out lucrative incentives. A manufacturer in the Czech Republic has offered company-financed apartments for new hires and even free food in canteens. A Polish company has taken to social media. They are pushing ads on internet platforms to attract interest. But still, finding the right fit is a challenge. The reason is the tight labor market. Europe has one of the largest aging populations in the world. The weapons industry needs younger workers with technical skills. They are becoming harder to find. So some manufacturers are turning towards alternatives. They are joining hands with local universities and exploring technologies like automation to expand. There is an urgency to ramp up production. The weapon suppliers are responding to demand. Central Europe is an important pipeline for Ukraine. Last year, 29 nations supplied major weapons to Kyiv. Out of the 29, two countries stood out, Poland and the Czech Republic. They sent more than 20% of Ukraine's arms needs. From tanks to armoured vehicles, howitzers, air defence systems, helicopters, ammunition and rockets, Central Europe supplied all of this. And they intend to keep going, because the demand is showing no signs of slowing. Russia invaded Ukraine over a year back, and no side still has a decisive edge. The forces on both sides are fighting for every inch of territory and they're leaving no stone unturned to gain the upper hand. Recently, Ukraine launched a counter-offensive. The goal was to push back the Russian forces and reclaim some of the lost territory. Progress has been slow, but Kyiv is pouring everything into the offensive, from heavy arms to even toy drones. Ukrainian forces have repurposed them for military use. On the front lines in Zaporizhia, a gamer-turned-soldier recently put a new gadget to the test. This drone might be small, but it packs a punch. It is flown straight into the target to inflict maximum damage. Since I've been transferred to this unit to work with drones, every time I put on my goggles and take the joystick, I recall my mother telling me that those video games would not do me any good. Well, if this isn't useful, then what is? The war in Ukraine is a frozen conflict, with no signs of simmering violence or bloodshed. So, as long as that's the case, the demand for weapons will thrive.